Uh, gentlemen, forgive me for disturbing you again, but I have a little problem. A little problem, a little problem. Everyone has little problems now, you know. They are kept to oneself, and they don't stop the world from turning. Nor trains from leaving stations. I haven't introduced myself. My name is Kate Walker. Walker, Walker, haven't we already had a Miss Walker? Ethnology Masters, September 1953, if my memory serves me correctly. Perfectly well, my dear colleague. But if I may be so bold, it was a Mr. Walker and not a Miss. It was Bill Walker, sat the June 68 exams. The impudent fool turned up for the oral assessment in jeans flouting strict internal regulations which explicitly state the required uniform for the occasion. Pure incitement. It was scandalous. Sadly, we have seen worse since. Young people lack all respect of traditional values. Tradition, young lady. One must always uphold tradition. You see, I didn't actually intend to stop here, but the springs of my train gave up, you see? No, not really. You mean to say you're not a student? You have arrived a little late in the term, Miss. Enrollment for this year has already terminated. But as rectors of this university, and therefore representatives of its highest authority, we could bend the rules a little, if you like. You don't understand. I'm a lawyer from New York. Or rather, Valadilen, more precisely. My client wants to buy out an old mechanical toy factory, but its heir isn't actually dead and is living somewhere in Siberia. I've got to get to him to sign the sales contract. You see? Not really. This is a most peculiar tale. A kerfuffle of the highest order. We have an excellent law school, if you should ever change your mind. Can you possibly help me out here? Miss, your insistence is almost verging on indecency. If you don't mind, could you not disturb us all the time? Thank you. We cannot constantly be at your disposal. We have many other requests to attend to. Does the name Hans Vorlberg mean anything to you by chance? Ah, one of the brightest, most idealistic intellects to have graced our university. Hans Vorlberg. I remember speaking to him once. I was still a student at the time. He just stared at me, lost in thought for a while. He scarcely ever said a word. But how can one forget him? Idealistic? I'll grant you that. But bright? Oh, don't go too far. He was completely incapable of passing any exams. All he ever did was to sit in on lessons, and not many of them either. Paleontology, mainly. He had an unhealthy passion for mammoths, which matched the state of his intellect perfectly. That is to say, prehistoric. Prehistoric? How dare you? A little far-fetched, maybe. But he did have flashes of intellectual brilliance, comprehensible only to high-minded scholars who hold no score by appearances. My dear colleague, your hasty conclusions are somewhat cavalier. My assessment is wholly accurate. The boy was a little odd. You must concur if my father, who was rector of the university at the time, had not shown great indulgence towards him. Hans Vorlberg would have never attended this establishment. What about the bandstand, then? Is that the work of a deranged mind? Even after all these years, you are still jealous of it. My dear colleagues, I beseech you, let's show some decorum. We have a visitor. Uh, what do you want with Hans Vorlberg, miss? Uh, are you a member of his family? No, no. Not at all. I'm looking for him to clear up an inheritance matter. Is he still here? What? Here? At the university? <laughs> no, not at all. He left a long time ago. Yes, a very long time ago. The very year I was nominated to this position, in fact. Almost 50 years ago already. The poor soul moved on once he learned all he needed to know about mammoths. Ah, this establishment was never quite the same after his departure, it must be said. You mean to say it was never as bad? All that oddball brought to this university was his misplaced fantasies. Gentlemen, gentlemen, let's try to retain the calm and 
level-headedness that befits our position. Excuse me. Miss, we find ourselves terribly put out by the presence of your train in our station and by its recurrent immobility. Indeed, the situation is very regrettable. Your huge locomotive is very cumbersome. A train should first stop, then subsequently leave. That is the rule. That idea of the station aviary is really very original. It's the pride of our university. One of the specialties taught here is zoology, you see, and more particularly, ornithology. Proper study and instruction should not be limited to books. Observation of living matter is indissociable from theoretical questions. It contains some very rare specimens that have been brought back from far away exotic countries, especially for our university, by the world's most intrepid explorers. Do you remember Alexander Valembois? And his peculiar bird? Absolutely. His gift produced some very embarrassing long-term consequences. A poison chalice, indeed. It must be said, the situation could have been much worse, however. Oh, yes, it could have been terribly problematic. Some sailors have agreed to tow the train, but I don't have enough money to pay them. I was wondering if you could help me out for a while. I could work for the money. Please wait, miss. We have certain confibulations to attend to. That is right. We must confibulate between ourselves. A collegiate decision must be taken. I hope that we are not indisposing you in any way. <clears throat> Why not? If it helps us get rid of that train. My word, that is a fine idea. What do you have in mind, gentlemen? Hmm. When you arrived here, you must have noticed a splendid bandstand which honors the main university courtyard. A unique piece of mechanical craftsmanship which no longer works, alas. Why, yes, we have very moving memories of its melodies. We're prepared to offer you a financial reward if you can set it working again. With pleasure. What do I have to do? Unfortunately, my dear, time and rust have taken their toll on this university, and our automatons no longer have a spring in their step. <laughs> you are going to have to be resourceful. To tell you the truth, there are a number of complex mechanisms here in Barakstadt. And it would appear that we have unfortunately lost their operating instructions. Your train, however, is an extremely ingenious invention, so you should be no stranger to complex mechanisms, should you? Uh, we are therefore counting on your ingenuity, miss. I hope that I can show myself worthy of your faith in me, gentlemen. Well, my dear colleagues, one more university matter nicely tied up. Can you tell me if I can find Yangalakola here in Bagstadt? <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, come again? What on earth are you suggesting, miss? How positively infuriating. I am sorry. Look, are there any... Yangalakola! The lady said Yangala Koala. No, she said Yangalakola. No, 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 you have no idea. It's Yangola Koala. Do try to follow. No. no! Right, Honorable Assistant Rector, sir, are you in any way insinuating that I am hard of hearing? I would not dream of such an insinuation, oh, right, Honorable Assistant Rector, sir. Uh, dyslexic, maybe, however. I seem to remember you having a little difficulty pronouncing tricky tropical names. What? I, I think you'll find it's you who has deficiencies in the area of cultural matters. Gentlemen, please. The right pronunciation is Yengala Kola. It's a little... We understood. Perfectly. <clears throat> and, uh, and why might you be looking for this Yang uh, thingamajig? Indeed. What a strange request. Why could you possibly need Yengala Koala?
You wouldn't know if there is any Forest Sauvignon here in Barakstadt, would you? Absolutely. <clears throat> when he says absolutely, he means, of course, absolutely none. What we mean, of course, is that we are absolutely positive there is no Forest Sauvignon here in Barakstadt. Really? Are you sure? Because I read in a book that Barakstadt possesses a number of plants. I wouldn't mind getting a hold of some, if possible. Out of the question, miss. Don't forget the regulations, miss. Don't forget them. Trains should first stop, then subsequently leave. And quickly! The assistant rector means to say that our priority is for you to remove your train from our station. Your research will have to wait until your next stop. Yes, that's right. Y your train must leave the station immediately, so please refrain from wasting our time in needless visitations. If you can possibly get the canal lock open, then the sailors will be able to tow the train up to the winding machine. What a surprising request. Open the lock? What a singular idea. Our university isn't responsible for the functioning of the canal locks. A different administration deals with that, miss. Here we are, busy chat-chatting, and look at the clock. It's tea time. Already? My word, doesn't time fly by? Thank you for a charming visit, miss. And thank you, gentlemen. Excuse me. <clears throat> Can I disturb you a second? No. You could be a little bit nicer about it. Keep quiet. In case you haven't noticed, we're somewhere that requires silence and tranquility. Hello. Shh, don't talk so loud. I'm sorry, but I was wondering if you could help me. 
Can't you see I'm very busy? What are you looking for? None of your business. Now, if you don't mind, I am trying to concentrate. I haven't got a lot of time left before Professor Pons's next tutorial. Professor Pons, you say? Would you mind working elsewhere, please? That door is locked.
Excuse me. Sir, please, just a moment. Yes, what is it? I'm not deaf, you know. I am sorry to disturb you in your work, sir, but... This young mammoth, this primigenius, is barely 40,000 years old. Fantastic, wouldn't you say, miss? Uh, yes. Probably. What do you mean, probably? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? Well, you, you don't know, I see. What can I do for you, my dear child? To tell you the truth, I don't know very much about mammoths, and I'm not here as a student. In fact, I'm a lawyer. It's all right. Nobody's perfect. All the same, the study of the Pleistocene period is fascinating. I'm sure it is, but I'm sorry to say my current mission is totally monopolizing my time. Um, another time, maybe. Ah, oh, that's what they all say. But anyway, let me present myself. I'm Cornelius Ponce, Emeritus Professor and Lecturer at the University of Barhofstadt. I'm proud to say that I'm head of the Department of Paleozoology at our university. Kate Walker, pleased to meet you. It wasn't really my intention to stop off here, but I'll confess, this university is really very impressive. Ah, indeed. There's such a tradition of learning here, and so much knowledge, a real depth of culture, intelligence, and gray matter. I myself did my studies here and never left. Actually, I'm here because I've been summoned by the rectors of the university. Oh, I see. You must have made a mistake on your enrollment form. Uh, oh, no, no. I haven't come here to study. I have an important matter of inheritance to attend to. I have to find the heir. And you hope you will find him here? I'm not altogether sure. But you see, my train broke down coming into Barakstadt Station. In that case, my dear, you must come to one of my lectures. Uh, here's a question for you. Do you know what the Proboscidean Order is? The probo -whatian? Ah, you see. There are gaps in your knowledge that need refreshing. I feel I've lost my way a little here. I could really do with your help. Oh, my dear child, you've chosen your moment. I absolutely must finish off my lecture for this afternoon. It's a lecture about mammoths? Oh, yes and no. More specifically, it is about their migration. Do excuse me, I need to concentrate. To tell you the truth, I'm looking for Mr. Hans Varlberg. He's the sole heir of a very unusual factory. My company is in charge of negotiations for the takeover of this factory. Uh, at last word, he was living in Siberia. So, as soon as my train is ready, I'll be continuing my journey eastwards. Siberia. Ah, Siberia. But what was it you said again? Said what? You mentioned a name. The person you are looking for. Vorlberg. Hans Vorlberg. Do you know him? Hans Vorlberg. How could I forget him? Such an extraordinary fellow. So inventive. We shared a passion for mammoths, you know, and we bonded over this passion. Without it, I confess, I would have had little to do with an odd, ageless retard like Hans. At the time, we were both students. Well, sort of. Put it this way. Hans had special permission to attend paleontology lectures. You see, he didn't really have the necessary qualifications. In exchange, Hans did a few odd jobs around the university. Your Hans Varlberg sounds uncannily like the one I'm looking for. I'm not sure, my dear. Hans was above all questions of money and business. Just to imagine him running a factory, <laughs> perish the thought. Can you tell me a little bit more about him? He was always a mystery to me. He never said very much, never quite seemed to grasp what you said to him. He expressed himself instead through his incredible mechanical contraptions. His inventions, I admit, have been much appreciated by the university few times we really did talk, it was about his strange interest for mammoths and a doll. Some sort of doll that obsessed him. A doll, you say? Yes. He kept talking about it. One day he described it to me. A sort of children's toy. A miniature mammoth mounted by a mount. 
It appears he found it in a cave not far from his home. The event all sounds very dramatic. His account was slightly confused, but it awoke a great interest in me. What do you mean? To my knowledge, there was only one tribe who made figurines featuring a mouth, and that tribe is the Yukols. They live in the farthest reaches of Siberia, and for them, the dolls constituted a sacred object, illustrating one of their central legends. How such a doll made the journey from the frozen Siberian north to a cave in the French Alps is a mystery to me. Even today, it is beyond my comprehension. Have you considered that Hans Varlberg was maybe making it up? You said yourself he didn't seem to have all his mental facilities intact. No, that's impossible. Hans couldn't invent the story like that. The doll is a sacred part of the Siberia legend. He described it to me in exact detail. Siberia itself is a chimera that paleontologists of the world are very fond of pursuing. Arriving in Barakstadt is an amazing experience. I've never seen such a station. Uh, you came by train? Yes, in a kind of clockwork train with a spring mechanism that winds down. Regularly. You mean you drive a train? Young ladies of today never cease to amaze me. Oh, no. I'm not the engineer. The train's engineer is actually an automaton. I am sorry, all this probably sounds very strange. A clockwork train, driven by an automaton. I once knew a man long ago who could have invented such a train. It was he who designed the bandstand in the main square. Ah, to think that he was even capable of creating such a gadget. He was astounding, a true genius. But oddly, at the same time, he was also... almost a child. It was as if his mental and physical evolution had definitively halted at the age of ten. Can you believe that? Uh, yes. I think I can believe that. At least I'm beginning to. My train stopped in a peculiar aviary. It's very odd. A lot of bird species seem to seek harbor there. Ornithology is far from being my favorite subject, but I must concede that the station is the pride of the university. It was initially intended for teaching purposes, but then birds started arriving from all around the world. <laughs> it seems that there are still rare species breeding there and flourishing. Are there? Can you give me an example? Mm hmm. I have been told about a kind of bird with peculiar habits. Let's see now, the, uh, um, the Amazon cuckoo. That's right. But, uh, oh, I'm so foolish. I can't remember what was so special about it. Just that its behavior is very peculiar. The Amazon? Where's the Amazon? What is the Amazon? I'm sorry, my dear, but one cannot learn everything in a lifetime. Specialization is the key to real knowledge. Why don't you pay a visit to our library? Thank you very much. Uh, Professor, uh, how do I say this? You see, I didn't think I'd need a lot of money when I set out. And it turns out I need money, after all. It's a delicate matter, I know, but I was wondering if you could help me out. My dear, it would be a pleasure, but you see, I barely have enough myself to cover my meager expenditure on what I'm paid by the university. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to offend or... However, if we look at the example of Hans... It is true that our university always rewards people who perform some service for it. This is our dear rector's jurisdiction, however. I read in the library in a book on the Amazon that there's a mushroom called the Yangalacola. I'd like to try and find some if you have any in your collections. It just might come in handy. Yangalacola? Ah, but of course, a marvelous idea. Yes, yes, indeed. I expect I have some of that somewhere in my laboratory. I remember pulverizing it myself. Uh, now, now, where did I put that container? Do you mind if I have a look around? I'll be careful. Oh, no, not at all. I wish you luck in trying to find something in the midst of this uh, scholar's jumble, but please, go ahead.
If I were to say Forest Sauvignon to you, what would you say? Oh, let's see. Sauvignon. Sauvignon? I would say it's some kind of tropical shrub, don't you think? We are talking about the same plant, then. It is a very rare shrub with small, juicy fruits. I found a book about the Amazon, and it says that there are even Sauvignon plants growing right here in Barakstadt. You wouldn't know where, would you? Mm, Amazon Sauvignon plants here? No. No, I don't think there are any. Highly implausible. But, uh, you should ask the station master. He is keeper of the greenhouse at our university, so he could tell you more than me. Oh, thanks very much. I'm under the impression that if I am to continue my journey, I'm going to have to open the locks on the canal. You're probably right, my dear, so open the locks. Whether they are open or closed is none of my business. I'll leave you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry? No, 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 not at all, my dear child. Do excuse me, Professor. Professor, sorry to disturb you again. What is it you want to know, miss? I read in the library in a book on the Amazon that there's a mushroom called the Yangalacola. Yangalacola? Ah, but of course, a marvelous idea. Yes, yes indeed, I ex... Do you mind if I have a look around? Oh, no, not at all. I'll leave you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed... Sorry? No point. It's locked. Hello? So, you got him then, this air? Ah, it's you, Mr. Marson. Good day, and, and how are you, sir? I'll feel a whole lot better when this whole business is over and the sales contract is signed. Where the hell are you? I'm in Barkstadt. Bollocks what? What in God's name are you doing there? It's a magnificent university town. It would appear Hans Varlberg once passed by here several years ago. So if he isn't there anymore, then there's no point hanging around. I hear what you're saying, sir. But I have good reason to believe that Hans Varlberg is still alive. For the time being, I'm trying to gather extra information from people who have known him. What's your next destination? I'm not exactly sure, yet. Doesn't sound like you know too much, Kate. I just need a bit of time, Mr. Morrison. Yeah, well, time is what you ain't got. Keep me posted. Hello. Hey, baby, you party? You sure looking mighty fine. Love those big round eyes. Just who do you think you are? 
Hey, he's spunky. I'd like that in a lady. Okay, I'm hooked. Come on, Zal. I'll let you buy me that coffee. <laughs> I don't remember ever asking. Hey, don't play hard to get. I know you like it big time. Listen, kid. Go back home and play with your toy cars and forget you ever saw me. Hello. Hey, baby, you party? Just who do you... Hey, he's... <laughs> hey. Listen, Things jammed. If that's going to work, it looks like something's missing. If that's going to work, it looks like something's missing. <sighs> this thing's. If that's going to. Things jammed. <sighs> this thing's If that's going to work, 